Welcome to this week's Down Home with Tina show. I'm your host, Tina Thompson, and I get to highlight different folks in the community, and some of those are teachers. And I'm so excited to go ahead and highlight my teacher of the month, Melissa Sheets, and she is from my old high school, alma mater of Burn Union. I say high school. You're in elementary school, though. <laughs> so, yeah, you, no high school ever, any no. intentions no. on that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I've never wanted to teach high school. <laughs> no. Very different. So how yes. many years have you been a teacher, Melissa? I have been at Burn Union for 31 years this year. So, oh. And I did my student teaching there in the fall 32 years ago. Uh -huh and um, I subbed the rest of the year and I've been there ever since. So. Who did your student teach under? Um, B. McInder, so B. McInder, yeah. Yep, I remember that name. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah. You know, I didn't B. McInder. Have, have her as a teacher, but I do, I remember. So <clears throat> why did you decide to be a teacher? Was there somebody that you looked up to as a teacher that you were like, I wanna do this, or <laughs> did you just always love kids? Um, I grew up, my family is full of teachers, so oh, okay. my mom was a teacher, my dad was a teacher in Lancaster for over 30 years, vocal music, and um, I have cousins that are teachers, um, my, I have relatives that are on school boards, so it was just something that um, I grew up with, mm -hmm. so I really wanted to always be a teacher. I started out wanting to be a vocal music teacher, but then um, I decided that I didn't want to, I didn't know how to play piano, so <laughs> I decided that I'd better just stick to um, teaching the kids, so yeah. that's why yeah. I decided to do elementary. So you so. started out in fifth grade? I started out in fifth grade for a year, and then I moved to fourth grade for a couple years, and then when a second grade um, position opened up, I just leaped at it because <laughs> I really like second graders. What is it that you think it is about the second graders that um, you Second you graders enjoy? are still really excited to be at school. Um, they love learning. They love books. Um, they participate in everything you do. Uh -huh. um, they get some humor and sarcasm, which I do quite a bit. Um, <laughs> They're just really good kids, so yeah. they're old enough that they have some independence too, which I really enjoy that. <laughs> I Kindergarten teachers deserve wings. They, <laughs> yes. They're angels, <laughs> yes. so couldn't Aww. do that. <laughs> well, you deserve wings by your own right, I'm sure of that. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this, I didn't plan on asking, I just, this is always something that the kids, even now when I do a little Sunday school, they always like, I'll ask what a blessing, you know, what was your blessing this week, Minecraft? How do you keep that separate from school and maybe something you can even help parents to, to get their minds constantly off of wanting those video games? Because I'm like, well, this is not time for that. Right. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I've got them for just a little bit. You have them every day, Monday through Friday. Right. Um, I guess one of the things I always talk to the kids about the things that I like to do in my, my private life. Um, I love to go hiking and camping and spend time with my kids and my husband. Um, and I tell them all about that. Um, I also love to read. So one of the things that I love to do the most with my kids in my classroom is read stories to them. They mm -hmm. love being read to. Yeah. Um, I had a guest surprise reader today, Angie Aww. Barnes, that you interviewed last week. And she, is, she really had a great time with them. They interact. Um, and I hope that, and I encourage them to read at home and to talk about what they're doing at home yep. to, that they enjoy other than video games. But they, they yes. do bring up video do, games do, do. quite a bit, yes. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think in second grade, they're still going out and playing and doing other things that you, they still enjoy. They're impressionable at yes. that age. You're able to encourage and them actually take the advice. Yes, <laughs> yes <laughs> they are. Just, yeah. Well, um, so <laughs> what are some of the things that you do incorporate in your class? that um, is a little different or fun? Since my kids love to read so much, um, the curriculum, I follow the state standards. Um, the way I integrate everything in is I start with a, a, a theme or a topic. Um, this last couple weeks we did camping and um, because I like camping so much, so I have well, to share, that, it. share yeah. that joy with them. <laughs> um, we read 
fiction and nonfiction books about camping. I shared picture books with them about camping, um, talked about vocabulary that was in there, and did as much incorporating into that theme yeah. as we can. I'm getting ready next week. We're going to start learning about bats. And my kids can do research on computers. They have websites that they go to, and they can find facts. Um, so the after two weeks, they'll go ahead and write a research report for, about bats, nice. um, finding things on the computers. Then after that, we're going to learn about owls, and we're going to do owl pellets. So I try to do a lot of exciting things that are high interest for them. Nice. Um, in my classroom so awesome well thank yeah. you for everything you do we're already out of time you're my teacher of the okay. month and so i have goodies in here i've got ava jeweler certificate oh, wow. i've got from the pizza cottage from buffalo wild wings some belly jelly bellies belly jellies <laughs> Jelly thank bellies, you. monster mash. Maybe you share with the kids if you really want to give sugar them up or anything. Oh, <laughs> or not, you. they're not that many. But anyways, thank you so much, Melissa, for everything you do. And thank my teacher you. of the month is brought to you by Cryo Communications. So thanks to them. And folks, don't go anywhere because I am going to be back in just a couple of minutes. I have got Victor Jones coming up from Ohio University Lancaster Theater. It's down here with Tina. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. I'm your host, Tina Thompson, and I have got A. Victor Jones. He is Artistic Director at Ohio University Lancaster Theater, and I'm just thrilled when I always get to have you on because, and it's very exciting this year, Victor, because you have like some announcements that you're making that has not been quite made yet for the schedule, and you've got so much going on for 2022. I do. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm thrilled for to coming. be here in this beautiful <laughs> nice. location, also. Oh yes, it's, I love it out here. It's just gorgeous. It's fun. So, you have you been out here for? It's been a while. It's been a while. I was here for the pumpkin hike. Oh, you got to come this year Last if year you're in town. It's, it's yes, coming again to, soon. Yes, it is. Yep, yep. We just talked it's about that. It's where you're walking in the dark and you're like, oh no, don't let me fall. <laughs> As you're, as you're looking at all the pumpkins on the trail. You're right. That's a good point. That's Slow down, funny. kids. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That is, I love it. So, how many productions has it been? How many years now oh, gosh. that you have been doing? I it? had to fill out something new, some new paperwork at the university, <laughs> and I wrote twelve. And I'm like, twelve. Years. You know, something that I never thought I would be at twelve years. You know, when I started twelve years ago. <laughs> Why did you think that you weren't? Didn't think you were because like you like restarted, jump started, I guess. All there wasn't any was theater happening. and you know I came as an adjunct professor to teach one or two classes and thought that would be it and see how it would work out and then you know a year went by <laughs> two years three years and I'm like well five years okay that's pretty good so far <laughs> and then a year and a half ago during COVID I'm like oh it's 10 years here we are <laughs> and now COVID's over and a full season we're at year 12 when's retirement going? <laughs> <laughs> you don't seem to be like one that is ready or even near wanting to retire. Not I yet. could be wrong. Not yeah. yet. I mean, you might have your days, I'm sure, right? <laughs> don't I think we all have those throughout our lives, we all have like those days. throughout the years. It's time to retire now. <laughs> no, but I mean, what you do, you I have got a lot so more shows in me. You, you do. That is for certain, and my, a lot more years to come with those shows. How many shows has it been? Oh now, gosh, it's a do lot. we even know? It is a lot. It's Twelve a lot. years worth. I mean, that's at years, least at least two or three. Four or shows four, a year. Four at least. Then theatrical showcases, six of those a year. So it's a lot of shows a year. I'm so excited. I have been so excited. Every time I have you on, I'm excited to talk about the theater that is now in Lancaster. Well, thank you for having me. And one of the most what's coming up is one of the most beautiful plays ever written, in my opinion. Um, it's called The Shadow Box. It's written by Michael Christopher. Uh, it's a drama that I said I would never do on the OUL stage. And really? During the past six months, I've read it over and over and over, and I felt like my heart was in it now, and this is the time for me to share this beautiful story. 
Is it because you just, you felt you weren't ready and able, you didn't think you were able to bring what needed to be brought to the stage? Because I think that's probably why you don't do certain productions. You're, you're right? exactly right. I, I needed to make sure that within the drama, there was hope, love, and light. Which is what this is. So I had to have that, even though there's a lot of drama going on. <laughs> we had to have those characters who you fell in love with, rooted for them, and understood uh -huh. that they were living for the moment at that time. Not worried about what happened in the past, not worried about tomorrow, but <sighs> cherishing the moment that they're in right now with their families. So, What is the backstory of this? production because it goes way back <laughs> it does so so and i was involved with it at otterbein university when i was in undergraduate school so the show goes way back to broadway it, michael christopher debuted in 1977 it's a pulitzer prize and best play award-winning tony award-winning play uh it then went on to become a telefilm if those of you are older like me, a telefilm is when back in the day you only had ABC, NBC, CBS, and I don't know if Fox was around then, but you had a movie of the week. Okay, so now I get it. So it's the movie that was put on TV, it television. Was, it was so that's the why play it was version television. that was converted to a film, and they called it a telefilm. For television. Uh, and it was an adaptation of the original play, and Paul oh. Newman directed it. He was also one of the producers. He brought along his wife to star in it, Joanne Woodward. Uh -huh. You had Valerie Harper, who was uh -huh. then at the time in Rhoda, and Christopher Plummer, oh who goodness. was from Sound of Music. And we tuned in and watched this play that was made into a movie on, a I think it was ABC, I can't remember, um, but it's also streaming on Amazon Prime right now. It's on it YouTube. Is? Yeah, okay. it's on YouTube I gotta, also. I gotta look for it. But you gotta think about back in 1977 when this film was yes. produced. Yeah, absolutely. How exciting though. And, and you guys are back on stage. We're I mean, back that's on the stage. Biggest uh, fun thing. Following all university safety guidelines at this point. Um, it's exciting to be back. We're thrilled. We cherish this because for a year and a half we were on Zoom and all those sorts of things acting. So that had, had its own challenges in itself. And you're all back together now. We are all back together. And you're all doing your normal we are. thing and stuff. We are. And then in this, <laughs> the spring we have uh, a comedy of tenors which is part two to a play I did many years ago called Lend Me a Tenor. And uh -huh. you interviewed us for uh -huh. that. Uh, and then in the in the summer, we're thrilled to announce the Pulitzer Prize, Tony Award winning best musical, Rent. So a lot of great shows coming up at the university. There's a whole lot of work and a whole lot of things that you have to do, not just for the production side of it, to even get these plays to be able to. The licensing was, was challenging for them, all of yes. these. And what gets you there? How is it? Is it reputation? Is it just knowing what to do? I'm sure a lot of it's probably A lot of it goes into that. Sometimes they, well. you know, sometimes the licensing companies want to know what's your past production. That's Others what I mean. don't. Yeah. Uh, you apply for it. You got to make sure you have the funds to pay for it up front before you ever announce it and before you ever have any of the auditions. You got to make sure the, the playwright is paid, the composer, the lyricist, the production team that all were the original creators of the material. I don't usually ask this, but I think I want to in this time. So how do you raise the funds to get to those? Or do you raise funds? Is that something that the college So takes one care of the things is the previous production that you've seen pays it forward and pays for the next production, pays for the next production, pays for the next production. That's what I thought. So ticket yeah. goers are an, an essential part of all of our shows. Yeah. They really are. Uh, and over the years of 12 years, you know, we've been blessed enough to have a, a, a well-established theater program with support from our community. Victor, how many folks are going to, how many tickets are going to be sold for this? Only production? 100 per show. Okay, that's what it's I It's reduced figured. seating, mm -hmm. 100 people in Wagner Theater. The theater holds 472, but if you have social distancing and all that and everybody's all spread out, we want to yeah. make sure everybody's comfortable with what's going on. Uh, 100 people per show. Okay, when is the shadow box? November 13th through the 17th, the 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th at 7, we have a Sunday performance. I'm sorry, those are the wrong dates. Okay. November 3rd through the 7th, okay. uh, evening performances at 7, and 7 p.m. and then on Sunday at 2. And how do folks get tickets? Uh, Facebook on the university webpage, okay. www.ohio.edu forward slash Lancaster. 
Oh, or you can call the box office, 740-681-3353. How much are tickets? $10 for students and seniors, general admission for adults, $12. And taking donates, donations, because I'm sure limiting to just 100 is really hurt for that next <laughs> production. Thing. We always yeah. accept donations. That's, we also yes. accept costumes and set pieces and props. Oh. Any of those things, you know, that you want to donate, we could use all those things. But, of course, a monetary to donation always goes to help put on the productions. Are you doing anything for the holidays? I Not have a this year. yes, is no, a, kind of in partnership with someone else. A big announcement is coming soon, but I can't. <laughs> But I can't say what it is. It's not just us. This just happens, folks, because we don't prepare. I haven't questions talked about this time. yet, but there is well, something coming out. I only ask because in the past it was something that we've you done a done show in the past that has so. community members involved. We're doing something with a. We hope to. We're we're working we're just, on that now. It's so. coming up the second weekend of December. Okay, and so it's a big deal. Pay attention. Oh. That's so funny. I didn't even know. I didn't I even know, get any kind of little hint. The deal is not It work. So we'll just figure. You, everybody, will just stay pay attention. Victor, thank you so thank much. You. I'm so excited for the production. Everything is back to normal. Thank you. And folks, I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. It's downhill with Tina. Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. We were uh, retiring from Tucson, Arizona, and we made a retirement trip out around Ohio, having decided where we wanted to be. And we came across this town called Lancaster, and we fell in love with the downtown area, where the fountain is, and the memorials, and the flags, and, and all this stuff. And we looked around, and I said, there's our bank right there. There's something to be said about a, a community bank in your hometown. Right. If you live in the community, you should do business in the community as much as possible. So it makes sense to bank with the community bank that you where you live. Fairfield Federal is the bank to be at. If you if you live in this town or any town actually, you want to bank at a local home bank. And the employees are happy here. They're conversant. Customer service is through the roof. There's nothing more you could ask for personal or business banking, whatever you need. We take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. I have the owner of It's Downtown Bistro, Studios 123, and the Lancaster Hotel. Great. It is Tom Porton with me, and you purchased this building. It, I don't know how long it sat, if it did sit, but you purchased this boarding, building, and you just, what, part of it was because maybe the history of it? Or why? I guess I should ask you why, Tom, did okay. you purchase? <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, let me tell you, thanks for having me. Absolutely. And uh, I'd, I'd like to talk about the building and like the community to know about the building and the purpose of the building. And, and that's the answer is I was fascinated with the purpose of why the building was built, you know, some 80 years ago. And the purpose of why the building was built was the vision of the founders of Anchor Hawking who at the time employed 25 to 30% of your population here. And to continue to attract and retain employees, they felt that they had to add what I think is the heart into the community. And so they built the building that we're talking about today, mainly to attract and retain employees, mm -hmm by making a structure that hopefully enhances the quality of life within the city of Lancaster. That was the purpose of it. And frankly, that's what I wanted to continue to provide is, is basically a quality of life to all of the you yeah. know, residents and, the, and those that are visiting the city of Lancaster. It's a beautiful city. And uh, when I talk about you know, the quality of life. I'm talking about where people, where their most fond memories will evolve from this building. Okay. You know, whether it be 
birthdays or anniversaries or proms, homecomings, um, just hanging out with friends. That was the purpose of the building. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I just want to, more than anything, want it to become a, a real asset, you know, a, yeah. a, the heartbeat of your city. Right. And, and yeah. that's what I'm, that's why I bought it, and that's, that's what mission. fascinated me about it. Your goal, yeah, which you have the restaurant, Downtown Bistro, yep. Yep, the bar side of it, and then the restaurant side of it. What are the hours for that for folks okay. to come and make those memories yeah, <laughs> with friends the and downtown, family? The Downtown Bistro, we're open right now six days a week. Soon we're going to add Sunday brunch, but we're open from 11 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night. Okay. And a little bit about the bistro. You know, when I when I bought the building, it was in the summer of 2017, and the building was vacant. The all the upstairs was not occupied. It was vacant. The restaurant, a very 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 popular restaurant, mm -hmm. Shaw's Restaurant, was open, but it needed a total facelift it mm -hmm. it was dysfunctional you know sales were dropping etc and it 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 needed again it was the heartbeat yeah. <laughs> was hemorrhaging a little bit <laughs> and um, so it needed everything and kind of flash forward till you know February of 2020 when you, you know our world was faced, facing a pandemic. Um, the previous operators, mm -hmm. in all good reason, you know, they kind of surrendered control of the restaurant. And I don't blame them. And uh, a little side note, you know, the existing staff at the time, we kind of huddled up and, and I was the first one, you know, that said, or, these were young people. I said, are you sure you want to stay in this industry? Because next to the cruise line, it's probably the worst industry that you could be in. Right now. And yeah. we're into some uncharted territories here. Are you sure you want to do this? And um, unquestionably, all of them, you know, unanimous, unanimously said, hey, we love these people here, Tom. And we don't want to work anywhere else. Right. This is where we're planning to stake our flag, and this is our careers are here, and uh, we'll help you. I, I, I'm a real estate guy. I, I know nothing about the culinary industry, et cetera, other than it was facing, like I say, some Tough difficult times, yeah. times ahead. But they, this is about the people here. They, are, <laughs> they love our customer base. And uh, feeling, feeling, you know, their devotion, I said, Let's we'll do make it, it work. <laughs> we'll, Let's do we'll it. make it work. <laughs> no. So we'll we, it op work. <laughs> we opened uh, in November of 2020. Um, I don't want anybody to let their guard down. You know, we're still facing the Delta variant issues, etc. Yeah. Uh, but we were able to huddle up a, a good team, a good staff, and, um, and we're, making it, we're making it work. Perfect. So perfect. Um, I'm very, more than anything else, you know, people ask me, they, they compliment the remodeling, this and that, and I, I tell everybody the best decoration is to see the, you know, the smiling faces again. So that's, awesome. that's something that we look forward to. Yes, awesome. Tom, I know we're about out of time, but I just wanted you, I know that the Lancaster Hotel itself is open. Yep. and running and going so folks who want to stay in that because it's gotten a yeah. facelift as well yeah this is it's very interesting you know a little bit about in the buildings a six-story building we have the l city coffee and downtown bistro that encompasses all the first floor on the upper five floors when it was built again in 1940 there were 75 rooms the rooms were what i call hostel size they were 12 by 20 and you could barely fit a twin bed and a suitcase in the room. Right, yeah. So it was very dysfunctional. It, it needed a lot of work. Yeah. And the 75 rooms now have morphed into 20 suites. 
Um, it wasn't easy, but what we did is basically we took three rectangles, each of which were 20 by 12, and we took out two walls, and um, they're now roughly 36 by 20. They're the size yes. of a one-bedroom apartment. We're, we just opened the end of August, okay. and um, we have 20 suites, 12 of them are already leased to people who are there for long periods of time, more of an extended stay type resident. And then we have eight suites that are available for nightly okay. visitors. And again, we're very, very grateful for that. Awesome, awesome. I know we're about out of time, but okay. what is your contact information? Oh, my for contact that? information? So folks can contact, yes, for okay. the hotel. <laughs> for the, the, the best way to reach me is, or the hotel, is you can call the Downtown Bistro we have a website, okay. you know, it's uh, downtownbistrolancaster.com. You can reach me at tom at downtownbistrolancaster.com or you can, you can call me and okay. I'll call you back. Okay. My phone is 614-348-7876. Uh, and I want to say thank you again. <laughs> You're welcome and congratulations <laughs> on everything all right, and all thanks. of the cool and great things going on thanks. in downtown Lancaster and at the bistro. and the Ho Lancaster Hotel and the 123 Studios. So folks, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. It's Donna with Dina. Life is unpredictable. That's why estate planning is important. Estate planning provides you comfort and peace of mind knowing that you're taking care of your loved ones and ensuring your legacy lives on just as you envisioned. You lived a life that is beautifully and uniquely yours. You deserve an estate planning attorney who understands that and creates a plan as unique as you and in the best interest of your loved ones. You deserve the local, trusted, experienced attorneys at Dagger Law. Tina is brought to you by these amazing folks. I also just want to make sure that you know you can catch Down Home with Tina on Facebook, Down Home with Tina, of course. Also, you can catch me online at downhomewithtina.com and then also CLN, your hometown connection on YouTube and Spectrum 1021 all week long. Folks, I just want to share a little bit about, because the fall reminds me of pumpkins, and I think of, you know, just the beautiful leaves and things like that, but also apples. And something with apples, I've always had a tough time trying to figure out which apples were the good apples to maybe bake with, or the apples to just maybe have a snack with. So I just wanted to share with you a couple of things about apples that I have learned, that the best snacking apples are Fuji apples, and honey crisp apples and one of my favorite treats and snacks is to cut up one of the honey crisp apples and put in the of course core it out and everything and put it in the microwave for three minutes with a little bit of cinnamon on them so that's a great tasty treat but before i go i just wanted to share that little bit with you about apples and i just hope that you have a great week i know i'm out of time i had a great show a lot of guests this week and thank you so much for watching folks have a good one god bless good day